Okay, hello everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the new rewrite of the Osh install script that's now available in Maze Osh Linux ISO. This might be good for you if you want to install Osh Linux and you don't want to do it the Osh way. And if you're watching this video in the future maybe and you're using an old ISO, you can check if there's a new version by typing sudo pacman-sy osh install. And as you can see, it's up to date. So to launch the script, we will type osh install. And it takes us to the script. Okay, so one of the best features of this script is that it kind of protects you from yourself. So as you can see, if we try to install it, it won't let us install and it says two configs are missing. So we have to set a root password or a super user account and we have to select our hard drive. So this is actually a good thing that it won't let us install until we have the bare minimum configuration to be able to have a fully functional system. Okay, so now let's go to the top and work our way through this installation. Okay, so first thing we select here is the Osh install language. And as you can see, the default is English. We can go and say French, for example, and this is the language of the script itself. As you can see, the formatting is a little bit odd. So I guess the formatting is set around English. So we go and select English again. And next thing is the keyboard layout so we can go here and it says you can press forward slash to search so i can search for whatever uh, bone i don't know what is this but you can search for it okay let's select us next we select the mirror region so the mirror is uh, multi-select so we can select more than one mirror okay we select them by pressing space bar okay and then we press enter if we go back to the mirror region and then we press escape it will deselect everything so we go back and we let's say on osteria we press enter it will select it we want to deselect it okay we press space and we let's select what Italy maybe mm, worldwide okay okay so now we need to select our hard drive if you go to hard drives we will see the first one is basically our ISO the second one is our hard drive the 100 gigabyte one so if we select it we will have another option selecting the disk layout if you go to desk layout, we will have two options. The first option is basically manual partitioning. And I don't think it's ready yet. Uh, I tried the manual partitioning and it took me out of the installation script while trying to do it. So I don't think it's ready maybe in future versions. So the second one is auto partitioning. I will use the auto partitioning. I will choose better FS let's see i will go with the default would you like to use better fs sub volumes with the default structure yes better fs compression yes set an encryption password so you might need to set an encryption password if this is on a laptop or something but this is actually a version machine so i don't need to do that okay so selecting our bootloader if you are on bios system so you will only have the option of grub but because I am on UEFI, I have the option for systemd boot CTL and I can use Grub. So I will use Grub. Okay. Now using swap. Okay. I will leave it as true as the default. Now specifying the host name, I will choose Osh dash VM. Okay. So setting the root password, I will go here. I will write my password. It's warning me that my password is weak. I will bypass that and write it again for confirmation. Add the user account. Let's see. Write the username, write the password, confirm again the warning, again for verification. And here we are. So here we can 
add another user, change the password for this user, promote it or remote it, delete the user. Okay. So if I leave it like that, I think this uh, user will not have sudo privileges. So let's see after the installation. So the concept of profiles, the profiles are like when you are in a GUI installer and you select a specific desktop environment or you select a specific window manager, it's the same. So if you go to profile, you will have the desktop profile, minimal profile, server profile and XOR profile. So let's see, if you go to desktop, we will have a bunch of them. Let's select GNOME for example. And here you select the drivers for your graphics card. So let's see all open source default. And here we are. Now the audio. Pipewire is the default and you have also the option for pulse audio. Okay, I'm going to go back to the profile and I will select minimal. I want to see what's in the minimal profile. I will go to audio and select none. Okay, so the kernel is actually a multi-select option. So if we go here, we can choose different kernels like the hardened, the LTS, the Zen beside the default one. And the installation will install them all. Okay, so you can actually not select the default also. You can select only the LTS. And here it is. Okay, so I will select the default selecting additional packages to install so they are telling here that we should write additional packages to install space separated leave blank to skip okay so if i type firefox firefox will be installed if i type something that does not exist it's actually checking for the existence of the package so this is actually nice let's skip you know what i want to try something let's go to the profile again I want to choose no profile. Profile is none. Okay, let's see if the installation is going to crash or what, what's going to get installed. Okay. okay, for the network manager configuration. So let's go here. You have the option to copy the ISO network configuration to the installation or use network manager necessary to configure an internet graphically in GNOME and KDE. So if you have chosen GNOME or KDE or any other... Uh, graphical interface you should probably choose network manager i'm gonna choose this selecting time zone this is actually a very big list so you should search here okay setting time sync ntp is set to true i will leave it like that additional repositories so i'll select the multi-lib Okay, so now we can proceed with the installation, but I want to show you something. If we go to save configuration, we can save the user configuration, the credentials and the disk layout. As you can see here, here is my password. So I found that when I press save all, the script does not save them all. So I will save them one by one, enter the directory. I'll choose the root, save configuration, credentials and save configuration, the configuration in the root. Okay, now we can apport the installation and then we can launch it again with the configs. Let's first uh, verify that they are saved, ls. Yeah, they are here. So let's osh install dash dash config and user underscore configuration and then dash dash creds user underscore credentials dash dash disk underscore layouts and then user uh, user disk okay now it's launching yeah it got us back all the configuration except for the root password so here we have to add the root password again and now we can proceed with the installation okay so now let's press install it's telling us to enter to continue okay and it's working so i'll pause the video and i'll come back after the installation has finished
okay so the installation has finished without any errors it's saying would you like to root into the newly created installation yes okay so here we are in the fresh install of Arch Linux after the reboot so let's log in okay so let's see if our user has sudo privileges as expected let me show you guys how to fix this okay so to fix this we need to check if our user is part of the wheel group okay so we need to switch to the root user okay let's clear the screen okay so i believe when we chose the non-profile uh, it actually installed the minimal one so let's see if we have an editor Nano is not installed, Vim is not installed, so let's install an editor. Okay, I'm gonna install new Vim. Now, let's see if we press vi sudo, won't work. So we need to export editor equal in Vim. Now, if you do vi sudo, it should work. Okay, now we need to go to the wheel line here, this one, and remove the hash and dot w quit to write and quit. And then if we exit from the root user, we are now echo dollar sign user. Yeah, we do sudo. Now we have pseudo privileges. Now we can update our system. So we have a new kernel. Okay, so let's install uh, NeoFetch for the sake of. And NeoFetch. Okay, and here's our system. We have 157 packages. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and goodbye.